Good afternoon, comrades. Hi. <laughs> and welcome to the last lap of the year. Probably the last lap of the year because sometimes uh, Neva Creek decides like, oh, it's nice weather. Let's open the track mid-December. But officially today is the last day. So we're going to have kind of a symbolic ritual lap. Well, let's hope it will become ritual, but that's something we will have to find out for next year and years after. So, yeah, we're gonna talk about Apex in general, about how it uh, was for us this year, um, how it was, yeah, the good sides, the bad sides, how we started, uh, what we liked, what we probably didn't like, well, maybe things, uh, plans for next year, although I hinted here and there in some of the previous vlogs, what our plans are going to be for next year, but yeah. Mm. Would you like to start with some things? <laughs> Since you are the founding father, like the main initiator of the idea, who messaged me somewhere in a cold January evening, I think. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, sup, do you want to start business? Like, yeah. <laughs> why not, right? Yeah, why not? Nothing better to do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I quit my previous job anyway, so uh, why not? And it kind of turned out, I would say, more than okay. Yeah, I'm very uh, satisfied. So, yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, it was definitely put together very quickly. Um, we we had some ideas and, uh, you know, really hit the drawing board mostly through WhatsApp, a couple phone calls, and uh, a I couple think of WhatsApp calls because I was I was in Russia, but then yeah, the, suddenly the internet connection was shit, so he just said, okay, screw it, I'm just gonna call you a casual line, and uh, ended up talking like for two hours. I don't know what the what the bill was of that. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll look it up, huh? Yeah. Um, no, so I mean, it was it was definitely put together rather quickly, and and uh, you know we had we had the same ideas of what uh, a, a operation like what Apex is, what it could be, and we had we had some goals and some ideas and some concepts, and um, you know so it was neat to put it all together. It was definitely hectic knowing. All right, here we are in January. Misha's still in Russia, and we're going to. Uh, put this whole thing together with a goal of trying to have some rental cars ready to go in yeah. in uh, <laughs> in January, right? Or in, in March, ready to go. And I think, what was the first car we actually had was the GT86? We went together to Kaiser Slaughter dealership, GT86. Yep. Uh, uh, we actually didn't even have a test drive. We just said to the dealer, like, hey, we want it. Yeah, we'll take He's it. He's like, do you want to drive it? No, we want it. But please drive it. Like, no, <laughs> we don't care. We need the car. So. Yeah, we went along with it and uh, turned out very well. Yeah, the GT86 actually ended up being a fantastic car for us, really. I mean, we we went ahead and we got the JRZ suspension in it. We ordered all of the parts from the cage to the seats to um, all the stiffeners and sway bars, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody that drove the car absolutely loved it. I mean, I love driving the car when I get in it. Um, the playfulness of the car, the excitement of the car, it really is amazing considering it only has 230 horsepower um it's one of my favorite cars to drive on the track without a doubt yeah. I've, I've told people you know uh all, over the time you know i mean misha really said we should get this for it we should get that for it and i said okay get, get what you want for it what you think we should and and let's go have some fun with it and really at the end of the day it's amazing it's a fantastic car yeah i think it turned out uh, definitely well regarding gt6 was still need to put the cage in and we still actually well by now we need to put a new engine in it yeah we got to put a new engine in it so it's gonna be a winter project but going back to the yeah to our one of the well, first initial phone calls when we were discussing what should we do with apex how it should be one of your questions i remember is uh what's your goal for me would be of apex and i said i want it to become something iconic Something like, let's say, Piston Klause has now as like the Nürburgring's most famous restaurant. And I want the Apex to become in the upcoming years the most famous car rental on the Nürburgring. And I must say, I think we're getting close to that goal because mo pretty much every modern generation of uh, well, drivers, the kids and uh, the current young generation who watch YouTube are on social media. A lot of people who are, we never met in person before and never seen uh, we see quite often when someone asks a question on any Nürburgring related social media, uh, what should we go, where should we go to the Nürburgring? And people who have never been to us, never met us, they say you, go, you need to go to Apex because that place is iconic and you need to meet those people. And that's, I must say, yeah, that pleases us a lot, it does uh, that a lot to us and 
we want to thank every single one of you guys who always recommends Apex uh, to other people who have never been to the Nürburgring and they don't know us. Yeah, I, th I agree. I think that, you know, for me, it's fun to have something that is uh, enjoyable for people, somewhere that they want to come because we, we want to have fun with them. This guy was flashing his lights at us. Yeah, that's Francesco. Ah, was it? I thought he has AW plates. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they it, it's somewhere that people want to come and want to enjoy. And I, I think that is a reflection of us wanting to have fun with it as well. I, I think that this is a business. Obviously, we have to look that it its costs are covered and that, um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't lose money. But at the same time, we want to make sure that it's fun for us as well. And that's what I said previously about um, you know, we have the GT86 and the M4 and the M2. We want to build those cars into cars that we want to drive. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, hopefully going to reflect to the customer that when they come and get in our cars, we're actually going to have a passion for the cars as well and be able to share that with them. And I think that all goes back into what, what you were just saying about us wanting to have something that people want to come to, that everybody knows, hey, go to these guys. You're not just another number. You're not just another... Uh, person that's going to come rent the car, you're going to have fun with them as well. And I think over this year, we've made a lot of actual people that I would say are friends. They're not just a, another customer. You know, they're actually people that we have on WhatsApp or Facebook messaging, and we know each other. We know each other's families, etc. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, I think when people ever come to Apex, they always say, "Yeah, you don't know me, but I know you," and that's kind of a fun yeah, thing. It is. And what distinguishes us? from not everyone but the most of the people is that we live by Nürburgring we uh, like every day are on the track uh, Robert is out with kids uh, on the track and we really live and breathe Nürburgring I have a pretty long uh, motorsport history before that and we do that because we want to share this passion with all the other people as well um, yeah so this another very big important point that we don't put invoice numbers to people yep. but put their names to it on our phones so he's probably also just chilling or maybe he wants to follow us <laughs> yeah so uh, we just passed Colin Hart which was <laughs> which is for us <laughs> an iconic spot because so far this is the only uh, spot where our car got totaled total, unfortunately yep. because of a very unfortunate accident it wasn't that bad but it was just a circumstance when the drive shaft went through the gearbox for people who haven't are not following us for that long um that was a downside this is something that we expected obviously well this is something you need to yeah we knew it would happen yeah we knew that it, it gonna happen at some point it's just like it was the least car we would expect because in the beginning we were like okay gd86 probably gonna get crashed first and it happened it was me who crashed it uh, but not by a customer, also not the M2, because rear-wheel drive, a lot of horsepower. Yeah, you know, we actually said the M2 uh, could be a car that's going to get crashed. Yeah. We actually, unfortunately, thought that it would happen this year, and very, I'm very happy to say it did not. It did, I don't even think it had a close call. Maybe one trip over the curb at Ice Curva, and uh, one trip uh, through Adnar Forest. <laughs> that's all I know about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Actually, yeah, only this happened. But I think overall, we did pretty okay. It was only the last two months were a bit stressy because, yeah, I took out the M4, literally. Uh, well, we had this, uh, the Cupra being taken out and the GT86, but other than that, we didn't suffer that much. And I think this also shows, uh, going back to the statistics, every single crash didn't have an instructor in them, right, everyone. In, in, in the car. Also with me, I also didn't have any instructor in the car. <laughs> I think Diana was probably yelling at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, So this is something we uh, definitely should tell to you people. Um, if you're coming, considering coming next year, ever for the first time, or even not the first time, you come to the Nürburgring, make sure to get the instructor with you. And speaking of which, of coming to the next year, uh, now we're going into the winter when everything is slowing down. We're going to have a lot of holidays. We're going to have Christmas, New Year's. You know, Santa Claus for the Dutch audience. Um, I think one of the most amazing gifts to give, but also most importantly, most amazing gifts to get. Is a piece of this tire wall? Um, thanks, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. Um, is an Apex gift card. So you can 
check the link in the description of this video and get uh, and contact us for a gift card for a lap or two laps with any car or just a value let's say like 50 euros 100 euros and i guess since we have like the next coming months 10 discount percent of of everything yeah exactly so probably the gift card as well right so you can buy 50 euros worth of anything you want for 45 euros in this case right yeah the idea is you know for us winter time is slow so it only makes sense to to get some turnover through the winter and it helps pay the bills and pay these guys for what they're going to do preparing for the next year and so one of the goals that we have is okay uh, if you want to buy something for Christmas we're going to give you 10% off anything you buy if it's a book a hotel room for any time in 2018 as long as you book it and pay for it book a rental car for 2018 buy a t-shirt buy a hat buy a hoodie which we got new hoodies we'll show you those later anything like that the just, one that I'm wearing actually. yeah just like that yep yeah. We'll show you that now. Yeah. Should I take the curb, Misha? Oh, wow. It's like riding with the kids, huh? Oh, yeah. The kids <laughs> always ask to get the curbs. <laughs> These guys behind us are like, they're driving so slow and they're taking the curbs. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> because boy, racers. Yeah, race car, come on. Race car drivers. We have harnesses. We can do it. Yeah. So what's the plan for next year? Do you have anything in particular in mind? You know, I just want to improve all of our processes. I want to... I want to make everything better, more streamlined, more efficient, better for the customer. Um, and I want to have more fun. You know, I think this year we really got off to a flying start. We got everything started out well. We got the, um, the rental cars put together. We got, you know, and, and so I think the, the goal for next year is to streamline everything and to make it more efficient and optimize what we have because I think you saw in another video where I said that a goal for two years from now would be to do some some racing, you know, and that's where, uh, you know, I'm not so keen that I don't need to get behind the wheel of a race car, but I think it would be fun to have an Apex sponsored team and, you know, get Tim and Misha behind the wheel of it, so on and so forth. And I think that next year we can optimize everything, get everything streamlined at Apex so that the following year we can really focus on doing that. Yeah, for me personally, I'm very much looking forward to see the difference between this year and next year uh, at the beginning of the year because again, we decided like in uh, February or something like, hey, let's start a company. So we only kind of really started in June when the Apex Hotel was built. And before that, I was sitting at Atomic all the time. Most of the cars were based at the Atomic parking. So we didn't have much and um, most of the marketing and well, sales uh, at all every Nürburgring related seasons are being done over winter because people start booking their trips uh, during the winter and for us we had pretty much nothing uh, right. because we weren't existent but people exactly. didn't know so I'm very excited uh, because actually as a matter of fact it's already well if I may use this term working uh, because people are already booking 2019 trips yeah, with us yeah. saying like listen we don't have the opportunity a financial opportunity or, or just time-wise to come over in 2018 or because I don't have my driving license yet because I'm just 16 but in two years I'm gonna come over to you definitely so this is something yeah I think if you look at all the hype that is around um, the Nürburgring in December all the all the chat groups Nürburgring now and all these people all everyone says did, did the schedule come out yet for the track days did the schedule come out for TF yet do we know what's going on you know this year we got the VLN races pretty early um, and so we can start a quick understanding of what's going to happen with the TF then. But everything is really happening in December and January because it's just shit months, you know, for for enjoying cars, right? You, no, no one's out in, uh, really racing or doing anything that time of year, so they're sitting in front of the computer just waiting for the next bit of info. And last year we didn't have that. We didn't we didn't get that uh, that rush from the business then. And I think that really. I noticed that we really started picking up. We might as well do another lap, right? Yeah. We didn't. We didn't really start picking up uh, heavily. I'd say our first really good month started coming in in June, July. And July, July, yeah. July yeah. I would say. July was really the first month where we said, okay, July it started. Uh, we kind of missed June, maybe ish. Yeah. But it was already picking up. But July, and by August we were or okay, end of the season. But no, actually August. Uh, September, September, October, October was, good as was well, like yeah. very full month, so that was very good. So, which brings us to the next point. Um, since 
at the peak of the season, most of the cars were already fully booked. Uh, we're probably going to expand. However, we said at the beginning already, we don't want to become the next biggest company of the yeah, Nürburgring. So we'll, not. we will definitely not have more than... Look at these 50. guys are going on safari. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Would they go straight over the grass <laughs> here? At oh, the, they should. <laughs> if they do, I'll follow them. <laughs> <laughs> the grasshopper. <laughs> yeah, we said we don't want to become the next biggest company of the Nürburgring. So, Probably not, not next year, but at some point the largest uh, number of fleet will be like 15-ish. I think so, so. Next year we're moving towards 10 because right now we have seven. Right. Uh, so we're probably going to add an up to that point because yeah, everyone's actually, asking for it. I actually have an up that will be ready to go into December. Um, so so we'll go to an up. I mean, we could talk about a couple of the cars for next year. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see um, something that Misha hinted to, uh, 718 Porsche. We don't have anything in the Porsche category. Our M4 is the top of the line car that we have now. Yeah. And I think that, that the GT86 could, the 718 could be the GT86 of the high end. Of the you know? high level. Yeah. And a lot of people were probably, uh, regarding the question, why don't you have X brand or X car was like, why don't you have a Porsche brand yeah. car? And we think the 718 is uh, probably going to be the best choice for now. And maybe for 2019, we're going to get something GT3-ish related right. 911. We will see. Maybe even next year, I mean, if we're going to have a huge demand. It could be. I, I already had a, an offer uh, on a GT3.2, 911.2. Okay. And it, the offer was very, very good. The price was uh, very reasonable, and I almost went for it. But, you know, I want to make sure that when we get cars, that they have a good place, that they have a good place for the customers and that people are going to enjoy them and it's not just one more car to have you know yeah um one thing that i'm also so we're thinking you guys might be able to give a little input on this the, the i30 right is yeah. really a lot of people talking about it and it looks like it's going to be a cool car but i'm trying to see where does it fit in with the polo and the cupra right i think it's going to be in between because the cupra going to be prepped exactly so that would be a very nice cupra replacement actually right the only issue, however, is the manual gearbox. Of course, many of you guys are gonna say, it's for the true drivers! But like you see with the GT86, it can have additional big problems. And thereby, uh, we are thinking more of getting the new Megane RS, because first of all, it's pedal shift. Yep. And second of all, Megane RS, a lot of people know Megane, uh, and it's gonna be like a cold, good cold seller. People are just gonna buy it by itself because they know the brand, they know the car. Whereas as Hyundai, no disrespect to Hyundai because they achieved a lot uh, in the recent years and the 24 hour race is a cool brand but a lot of people still have this thing in the back of their head like Hyundai uh, no thanks I just want to get something else because yeah it also happens with the Polo right now it's not say, pretty it's not beautiful it's not, enough. it's not beautiful we had customers saying Polo not beautiful and uh, well and then they said no we should still go for the Polo and they said okay so uh, yeah so we will see this is again something you are more than welcome and actually invited to, to give you inputs on regarding the cars that we should get because again the Polo, the reason we got Polo is because we had a big discussion what we should get the Polo or the Fiesta ST and everyone said go for the Fiesta ST and that's what we got eventually. Speaking of new cars, uh, also what kind of a personal car we should get because I'm thinking of replacing the up and I will go more into detail, it's going to be a more uh, separate topic regarding that. Uh, but feel free to input. Are you planning on getting new cars next year? Maybe. Maybe. Um, you know, there's a new car coming from McLaren. Yep. That, well, I think everyone, if they don't know what I'm talking about, will find out around 10 December what that car is, yep. along with some pictures and stuff. So that's in the cards, but I don't think those will be delivered next year. Mm -hmm. um, if they do, they'll be around, the first ones will be coming in the third, in the fourth quarter, which is obviously late to get it on the racetrack. Yeah. But so that's something that's coming. Um, I'm looking at right now probably replacing the uh, replacing the 570, possibly with a 720. Okay. And what I would do with that is actually get a very base model car, and I probably would want to just strip it down. 720. 720. Strip it down. Talk to Door Group about because you know they have their motorsport group mm -hmm. about putting a cage in it. And um, a cage 720. Cage 720, and then. You know, stripping all the interior out, making, you know, putting some real gnarly exhaust on it so it's got a really good feel to it. Yeah. And then turning that into, you know, the LT of getting just lap after lap after lap. 
that's pretty cool. Build your own LT. That's nice. I'm pretty sure that uh, some people would like to see that. And then the last thing is, I don't know how many people here know that I, I recently sold a, I had and recently sold a Ferrari FF. And that was my favorite winter car that I've ever had. I put 30,000 kilometers on it roughly in one year. Um, and it was mostly in the winter. And every time winter comes around like this right now, you put on your jacket and I think, man, I want an FF. And so I was actually last week speaking with uh, Frankfurt Ferrari uh, and we're going to take a Lusso mm -hmm. for a couple days for a test drive. So there's a good chance that a Lusso might end up at... Yeah, and Tom Stamp is coming back, so we're going to have probably a detailed review video Possibly, of the Lusso. Yeah. Because a lot of you people enjoy uh, our... Nonsense. Yeah, our nonsense, our chemistry. Speaking of Tom Stamp, He's coming like permanent. Yeah, that's that's actually new for next year, I guess. Yeah. Uh, um, so Tom comes on 28 November, and obviously that's an interesting time to bring a new employee to the Nurburgring, right? Yeah. But we want him to be there to show you guys what we're doing this winter, what the preparations are, uh, how we're setting up the cars with cages, suspension, what new nonsense we get into, and everything like that. And so I really love the videos that Tom put together. So he's go he is going to be here 28 November permanently and uh, get ready for next year. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to that and you guys as well because the projects we did together with him, for example, the VLAN videos, there's going to be more of that. So uh, also test drives. Uh, so some things, they require more professional editing and filming to like make our, them actually better. Like, like our favorite Russian cartoon character, right? Yeah, who's the Boris? He's going to come back because the reason why he's not here is because I simply don't have time for him. Because the daily vlogs, and you know, I sometimes don't even have time to edit daily vlogs. We're still, at this point, we have like two weeks delay. So, yeah, he's gonna hopefully come back. Most certainly gonna come back. And uh, there's going to be more of that. Yeah. Um, anything else that we I got? I gotta let the golf by. Let the golf by. Nice golf. Hmm. What's up with Club Apex? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> so we have the bar installed. We could technically do whatever we want there. Um, I'm back and forth on what I want with it. I I'd at one point thought, well, how cool would it be to actually have a lounge in Nurburgring, a place that people could come hang out? But at the same time, I don't know if I want to deal with some of the stuff that I've seen this year being here more on staying the night more and more and more mm -hmm. um, I see I do see a lot of people that are getting out of control with the drinking I'll be honest with you yeah. um, you know I've seen some late nights out at, at the bars and I've seen people in not good shape at 3 in the morning and then I happen to see them at 8 o'clock in the morning on the racetrack and yeah. that's something that I'm very 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 against is um, having too much to drink and then getting on the racetrack and so i don't know if with something like club apex if that's something that i really want to support um or worry about and i also you guys know how club apex is set up that it has the cars in it right now the tools are in it the workbenches everything like that and i'd have to separate that i have to change it you know mm -hmm. so we're working on something with the back lot and I think that, so I would say a club Apex where you can just come to Nurburg and go to a lounge at Apex is not going to happen next year. Um, I do want to do parties next year. I want to do something where you come and you know the first Friday of every month or the first Saturday of every month, or we might look at weather and announce it. We'll do Friday nights at Apex or something along those lines where we'll actually bring in a, a grill truck a bartender and actually do something really cool at Club Apex. It's gonna be the most epic food shot ever probably. That's why I want to do it. It's all about the food shot. It's all about the food shot. And so I think something like that would be uh, you know really cool and that, that might be the best way to utilize Club Apex um, so that it can still be a private bar, a private place where I can say oh you're in town you want to hang out in there with your friends no problem you can do so but not have the stress of it being something that uh, you know we're worried about at 
3 a.m. What's going on out in the barn? Yeah. And I want I do want to avoid that. And like I said, the other thing is what's happening on the track after people leave Club Apex. I, I really I just don't like it. I, I think that it's uh, a very irresponsible um, culture that I've seen pop up really heavy this year. Yeah. And say what you will, oh, for being righteous or whatever. I just don't want any part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I can agree with that. Um, there was a question in my head, but I kind of forgot it. Um, well, you want to know what our lap time was? Nah, doesn't matter. I think we're, <laughs> we're already like pretty much we're almost half an hour of the video, so there's going to be a lot of blah blah, a very positive blah blah. A lot of people enjoy our blah blah. Um, tim 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 tim. There was something. Oh yeah, what's up with the website? Well, actually, I have an appointment. I think it's on the 28th of November, if that's not a Saturday. It's one of the last days of November. Yeah. Um, I think the 28th would be Monday. That must be. Um, I have an appointment, and we will be finalizing everything. Mm -hmm. And once everything's finalized, it won't be with our final pictures and videos because we have big ideas of what we want Tom to create for the website. Um, so once that's all, once that's all done, uh, then Are we going for the third one? Well, you know, the track's still open. It's oh, yeah. pretty dry. Yeah. And what do you, what can you do, right? No, exactly. That doesn't have a clean problem. So yeah. you just have to keep exactly. going. If it's, this is literally, the track is open right now for what is the last time of the year, right? And you've got, you've got this thing. Yeah, so, the, the year ticket. So how much of an idiot would you be if you took a right-hand turn right now and went back to Apex yeah. when there's literally actually one more lap left? True. And if we really go quick too. We could make two laps, absolutely. <laughs> I would not say no to that. My memory card might say no because it might be full, but this is something we will have to see. We'll just switch to the race navigator. Oh yeah. yeah. So what do you want to see out of next year, Misha? I mean, what's what's your goal? Oh, what I want to see? I want to see more of the same regarding happy faces. Uh, people who come for the Nürburgring for the first time, but also not for the first time, and then uh, are being very positively surprised by the Nürburgring, by Apex. Um, I want to see less crashes of myself. I'll that, try to that would be myself. That would be very that'd nice. That would be nice, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, maybe... Maybe something, some racing program that we are involved in directly or indirectly, because uh, we have something in the works, and we will uh, tell you more about it once we know it. Um, we're gonna have definitely, yeah, well, two or three new cars. So this is something that we're gonna see, and we're looking forward to start working on them, learning those cars, upgrading them, and have all the enthusiastic reactions from the people on YouTube. Uh, commenting on it, following the process, and feeling involved in it. Um, I want to see Diana doing more laps with her new 318, because yeah, we went all the way to UK, and yeah, the car is still standing there. So hopefully, we will build it up, and uh, she can get uh, get out and drive a bit more that as well. Um, I want to see maybe Maximus drive. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? I mean, maybe get a simulator or something, or uh, do some more karting once he is tall enough to, to reach by the panels. You know, he's in a bad situation because he's tiny. He's still, he's four years old, he'll be five in March, and he still only weighs 14 kilos. Yeah. So he's just, and he's 99 centimeters tall, so he's just, he's just on the wrong side of this deal, you know? Mm -hmm. But obviously for the future, that's good. You know, if you want to be quick in a car, you need to be... You need to be small and you light. Know, you know, big and heavy like us, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's our excuse. <laughs> that's why we don't yeah, race. There we go. Yeah. That's why That's why I can barely keep up with this guy, right? 36, yeah. Um, I want to see probably Tiffany drive more as well. Yeah, you know, that's a, a big thing on my list actually is to find a car for her. What is she between? She's between an AMG GTR and a Mazda RX-7. And a Mazda RX-7, exactly. Yeah, Those so are her two. Which one would you pick, AMG GTR or RX-7? <laughs> Curb. Curb. <laughs> yeah, so 
you know, I, I really want to get her in something that she can thoroughly enjoy and, and really do some more laps. She followed us today. She did her, her polo solo lap. And, uh, you know, so I want to see her get more laps in and, and enjoy it. And I, I think, like, a day like today, if you look, there's literally nobody on the track. Yeah. Except for this guy. Yeah. Um, and this would be something that would be fun where if she had her AMG GTR or her RX-7 that she could have one kid in the car and me have the other in the car and we could just do a couple laps like this where we just go out and have a little fun and enjoy the enjoy the track have our intercom so we can talk between the cars and you know just just do that I, I really want to see her do that next year I think that a lot of people don't realize that the Nürburgring can, can be a family thing um, with Apex it's been a struggle for us because there's been things that need my attention and need my help and so on and so forth and I don't want to feel like Tiffany has to be at Apex with the kids I want it to be where we can all do stuff together mm -hmm. as the kids get older that gets easier as well and uh, if we can get Tiffany a good car to be in to drive then obviously that makes it that much easier yeah another thing that uh, is related to that and that I want to see more after next year is probably having more time together on the track for example like we had yesterday yeah that was fun wasn't it that was very fun and uh, maybe have one or two dedicated track days when we just have it for our own that is a big goal of mine as well um, one thing that I wanted to do was also set a schedule where we have um, okay it's today Misha's getting time off you know Misha's taking time off today he's going to be on the track in his car Diana has tomorrow so on and so forth so that we all have or not we all have because i always find my way to get on track right <laughs> but that everybody actually can enjoy themselves tim came to the ring because he wanted to be a part of it and he wanted to drive and he wanted to enjoy it you know and that's hard to do when you're working it's the same with misha same with diana and so i want to see everybody that's a part of the team including tom next year get more time on track get more seat time and 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 meet that goal of uh, progressing on the track and not only working the whole time. Yeah. That's definitely something that we're looking forward to. Yes. And obviously also feel free to tell us what you are looking forward to because again, this YouTube series is, uh, well, important, uh, important point of it are you guys because yeah, we're filming everything for you and showing you um, what you like to see. So tell us what you like to see more of course pretty much every one of you is gonna say like hey we want to see you, you driving more on the track or maybe even other tracks the thing is with our big media reach there is a lot of administrational hassle uh, involved regarding getting filming rights so it's just not every day that we can jump in and film you like what we're doing like what we did with 720 for example the test drive we're gonna try it, but uh, we'd like to see and hear from you. Okay, we're good. Yeah, be also realistic about things. Maybe more food shots and more laps. More laps with Apex. Yes, more laps with Apex. <laughs> yeah, I think, like I said, a big thing for me is really getting everybody out on the track more um, so that they can enjoy being here because you don't want to get burnt out. That's that's just not what I don't want anyone to be burnt out just working and um, yeah, we, we've all got to enjoy it yeah. we can't all just be working like this right now you know it's, no no it's 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 very horrible yeah. now speaking of which I mean you had like two weeks ago on the last track day of the year at Chanel Schwab you had 40 laps yeah I had 40 laps which everyone said oh that's amazing such a machine but then you, I think you, you're still sick from that I, I still feel sick I mean the kids were sick they brought something home from the kindergarten and I've I literally was sick for two weeks now I'm not going to blame doing 40 laps but I am gonna say that that probably made me a little bit more tired and took some of it out of me and yeah at the end of the day I literally was looking at okay how many more laps do I have to do and there's bigger problems to have than that, but as you do a lap and you start slowing down a little lap, you start slowing down a little, you say, okay, if, if I wasn't giving passenger laps and I wasn't doing that, I probably would have shut off 10 laps before. Yeah. Speaking of doing laps, a lot of laps, uh, well, honestly, we are working on getting a taxi license right. for next year. 
it's just a question if we're going to get one assigned or not and if we're willing to pay the amount of money that they're going to ask us obviously right um but let's just we always expect the best we are prepared for the worst <laughs> <laughs> um but this is something that would be really amazing because obviously everyone is asking us, hey, can we have the lap in LT? Can we have the lap in Spachat? Can we have a lap in the sub seven up? A lot of people are asking that as well. And unfortunately, we always have to say no because right. we don't have the taxi license to do it at TFs and we only are restricted to doing during track days. Uh, but hopefully next year it will be possible to do that. Um, this is something I'm also very looking forward to, but this is going to be a very big organizational struggle and challenge. Yeah, I can, um, I can say I have mixed feelings about it, to yeah. be honest, you know. Um, if you look at, if we had a taxi license this weekend and you park a line of cars like what we will have, even with what we already have, right? If you go from the Speciales to the McLaren, so on and so forth, the XX31, the Sub 7 Up, Tim's car, you know, if you, if you have a lineup of cars that people want to ride in, well, they're going to want to ride in it. And the weekend is the time that, that most people want to do this. And I don't know if I want to give 20 or 30 taxi laps on a Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah, but also in other issues, uh, I'm sure that many people are just going to say, hey, I want to have a lap, lap with Misha. I want to have a lap with Robert. I want to have a lap with Diana. But we have our own well, the jobs that we need to work on in the first place, being in the office or on the track instructing people. So we just really have to see how it works out. But you're going to be the first ones who are going to hear about it, that we're going to have it. And obviously, those are the cars that are probably going to be used for the taxis. But at some point, you'll probably be feel free to invite it to tell us, hey, it would be nice to have this or that as a taxi car at some point. Or maybe the Lusso. The Lusso, yeah. For, <laughs> that would be the most amazing thing, like the, the four-seated Ferrari. Yeah. Um, can we do one more? Can we do one more? Can we do one more? It looks good. This is the really, the really, the last, the last, the, the last, very, last, the last, the last, the last lap of the year. Three minutes. Nope. Two no, minutes. Two to spare. minutes left. <laughs> Should I throw this out the window? <laughs> You'll see me in five minutes when it's not, or in eight minutes when it's not closed. Scrounging. Where's my card? <laughs> like a junkie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is going to be probably my longest video of this year because right now we're at 37 minutes. So it's going to be probably an hour long video of Nürburgring and yeah, why not? Who is that? Just this guy we've been uh. messing around with. <laughs> Robert be like, what do you want to do? Ban me for the rest of the year? <laughs> for doing the burnout? <laughs> Actually, I'm wondering if they're gonna do any changes to the racetrack because they change something every year. Yeah, but you, you wonder, what does it need? Yeah. You know what I wish they would do? Watch this right here. When you need to pass somebody right here, yeah. there's a big bump right there. You feel yeah. that? And I hate that. They need to, I, I would love for that to be cleaned up. Now, I know that's part of the learning the track and the characteristic of the track, mm -hmm. but when you come in there and you're full break and you're trying to undercut somebody right there, yeah, you know, it's yeah. a pretty hard hit. So yeah. that's, that's one thing that I would love to see just smoothed out a little bit. Someone might say, oh, Robert, just deal with it. You know that you need to be done breaking by that point, whatever. Yeah. But. A lot of people also say you need to have the Formula One equivalent of the safety system like with all the digital flags like you have in Spa. I don't think you honestly need it. First of all, uh, look, there is a marshal. Last year you didn't have that many marshals during TF because TF, after all, is still a public road. And if you're going to say yes, of course, Nürburgring is a racetrack and blah, blah, blah. Partially true, but the purpose of TF is having it as a public road. So if you're going to transfer it into racetrack, you need to have higher fees yep. of the entry fees. So then everyone's going to be complaining like, oh, the lap tickets are too expensive now. And that's because of those reasons. And like we show you like, uh, in most of our videos, you don't need to have the fast car to enjoy the track or you don't need to drive it fast or on the limits. So in the end, it's also everyone's responsibility to just be safe. Like this guy, for example. He's just cruising around, 
indicates and lets us pass being a gentleman and there is nothing wrong with it. So of course safety is important, but um, for example in 2015 after this uh, unfortunate accident when the Nissan Nismo GT3 where it killed a spectator, they removed the bump at Flugplatz. So before that, cars would actually take off and be in the air at Flugplatz. Before 1971, they had a jump at Brinchen. They had a jump uh, before the mini carousel and those are gone. And I'm, I'm also thinking like, if you're gonna make this track too safe, that would also take away a lot of adrenaline and trails from it. It would not be the same. So you really need to have a perfect balance of it. Did you know that also in the 50s you had a, a parking, like a rest stop in Cullenhart? Yeah, there was a little, a little parking area, yeah. yeah. So you could actually stop there and just chill. Poststrasse. No, that's back here. Post yeah, Poststrasse was there. Yeah, Cullenhart. So you could have a toilet stop or something. <laughs> you want to go you have somebody to Cullenhart? Yeah. <laughs> I brought us some snacks. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay, that would be nice. I think a lot of people, you know, see the track as something you come and just do one lap and two laps or whatever and you get out, but, you know, what I want to also see next year is people learning the track and enjoying the track and figuring out all the nuances, how to drive it when it's wet. Like right now is actually, it's not terrible conditions, but it's tricky conditions. Yeah. You know, you've got, look, right here, you've got wet patches, you, you're a little bit offline in certain areas just to stay dry, but you can still carry really good speed. And that's what, you know, someone was giving us a hard time for driving in the snow last week. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's just part of what makes the Nürburgring so neat, yeah. is that you get these other conditions. A couple weeks ago, uh, I was in the black BMW, and I think I hit the crest at Schwedenkreuz. The, tack, the, the gauge said 270. We know that's not happening. Um, it was probably around 250 kilometers an hour. And when I came over the crest full, full throttle, I landed and it was pouring down rain. And it wasn't just like, oh, a little sheet of rain. It was just a, a downpour. And, you know, so you literally were just feathering the brake pedal, just hoping that everything went well. Yeah. And everything went fine. You know, had a, had a good heart rate through, through Schradenkreuz. But, you know, that's what makes this track so exciting is that you don't get bored after two or three laps, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, I'd have to look and see exactly what lap this would be for the year, but there's still little things that you say, oh, I'm going to try this next lap, or I'm going to try that next lap, or, you know, and, and with the drying line and a rain and snow, I want to see more people enjoy that and start to dissect the track and figure out what it really is. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what I'm excited for, too. Yeah, I think I'd really like to see more people joining our performance driving days of yeah, this year. Absolutely. Something we did for the first time this year, obviously for the first time this year because it's the first year of business though. Uh, but there was a big success. Everyone who joined, first they were a bit skeptical because they did like, what, eight laps a person a day and then like eight taxi laps, they're like, oh, just eight laps. But they were exhausted. Exhausted by exhausted the end of the, the day. End yeah. Because you get so much information. It's not only driving, but learning the track, talking about the track, talking about all the nuances, everything, uh, also the taxi laps and everyone uh, enjoyed it. And many people said, whenever you're gonna do it next time, we sign us up. Yep, exactly. So this is something we also want to share, not only the beauty of the Nordschleife, but also our knowledge that we gathered through the years here and share it with you. Actually, speaking of the most favorite sections of the track, for me, before I used to say it's a uh, foxhole, but yeah. now I say after the carousel up until, let's say, Whipperman, like this technical point, like end of the curb to the curb, then if it's dry, you can take the inside curb. You have to stay on the outside because the inside is the most slippery part. At the orange, you go on the brake, then turn into the right curb, left curb, orange barrier on the left, then going again on the brakes before that, then right curb. Then the red graffiti, which is unfortunately a bit damaged now, which is a nice reference point. Then left curb, if your suspension is good enough, then right curb, then to the left fence, another left fence on the brake. It's so technical and so satisfying when you nail it. So 
actually this year was, was a turning point for me to say like, oh, fuck so, because you're manly enough. Well, if you're manly enough and you just keep your floor, uh, pedal to the floor and uh, you nail it, it's so amazing. No, this whole section of the track for me is now definitely the most favorite one. And what about you? What's your? Um, my favorite section of the track right now is when you come out of Kalenhard, you go into Spiegel Curva, and then you go through Miss Hit Miss to Versiphon. Mm -hmm. That's probably my favorite favorite exchange and combination. Yeah. I think because if you can get the car at a, just the right balance, you kind of start to think, how did that even happen? You know, um, that's fun too. That's Annalisa's favorite part right there. Flans Karten, well, yeah. she likes Vipperman and Flanskart, and those are her two favorite. But um, I think that if you can get the car really on its toes through, if you set up Spiegel Curva just right, and then you come through uh, through Vipper, or uh, if you set up Spiegel Curva just right, and you come through Miss Hit Miss just right, I don't think that there's a better part of the track in my opinion. Yeah. Galgenkopf is pretty fun too, though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love Galgenkopf. You're in really need to find the perfect balance when you should start at which speed you should start moving to the right from the 186 to the right curves and this is something we're going to show you in about 15 ish seconds maybe even 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 186 and then you move over to the right gently and then you keep it, keep it, and make sure not to lift off because you're gonna suffer the lift off oversteer and then you're gonna have a very bad time. That's it, the last lap of the year. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna hit 300. <laughs> and also kids, make sure to let go of the accelerator at the gantry to make sure your car can cool down, unless you just don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last lap of the year. It's kind of emotional yeah, point. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm, yeah it, it's sad to see that the track's closed. I mean, that's the last time we're going to see the flashing lights for the year. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think everyone needs a little winter break. I think it's going to be good for our team, for the cars, definitely. DLT is going to probably get rebuilt this winter. <laughs> Third motor? <laughs> yeah, well, I Maybe. hope not. <laughs> I hope not, but who um, But yeah, I mean, I, th I think it, it is. It's, 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 bitter. it's emotional because you, you go through and just being able to do that on literally the last day of the year. It's, it's November, what, 19th right now? And uh, huge shout out to these guys who keep. Thank you, Shun. Vielen Dank. Bis nächstes Jahr. Danke. Danke. Tschüss. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, you you get to do that on 19 November in Germany. Yeah. I mean, th those were fun laps. You know, we, we slowed down a little because we were talking, but occasionally you kind of get on it a little bit, and and you, you get to still get after it this late in the year. We had just a fantastic track day on 31 October. You know, it, the the Nurburgring just doesn't stop delivering. I would say, you know, but. Uh, so with that, you're like, oh, if we just had one more weekend, you know? Yeah. But it's over. It, it's been, it's been a great sleep. year. I'm picking yeah. up my computer. And <laughs> yeah, so he's not going to get any sleep. He's going to be tweaking out, running up the electric bill. <laughs> 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 now, see, this is where you do your cool down lap. Oh, yeah, to the gas station. Oh, no. Or, or yeah, just, you know, we should fill it up. Yeah, because we're, we're going on the trip. Yeah, we're going to take all the cars home tonight. Oh, look at that. There's a guy in front of us, a he's, Lotus. He's warming he's, up the tires. He's getting, ready, he's getting ready for the after race. Yeah. yeah. Probably you cannot see it on the GoPro, but uh, yeah. <sighs> no, but I mean, all I can say is thanks to everybody that's watching this video, everyone that's come to Apex and supported us, um, everyone that's bought our t-shirts, our jackets, our hats, um, that's going to buy our hoodies that we have. Uh, next year I want to see you know some racing gloves and uh, different things like that. Maybe helmets. Maybe helmets with Apex on them. You know, just, just some cool stuff like that. But like I said, thank you to everyone that's, that's uh, been a part of the Apex team this year and, and supported us. And uh, yeah, I mean, all the, all the companies in Nürburgring have been great with us. You know, if you, if you look at everyone that we've worked with from yeah. the guys at GetSpeed helped us out with the LT, they put on great track days. 
Um, Alex at RT Motorsport was really good to us. Atomic. I mean, we could go on and on and on about Even our people. neighbors, so you would say, say, oh, competition, run for ring. No, they've been so helped perfect. Us, yeah, yep. helped us a lot of time. Perfect. They forwarded yeah. customers to us, we forwarded customers to yep. them. So actually, everyone on the neighborhood ring is one big family. Right. Yeah, so I think it's been really good. I mean, we were having a couple problems with the M2 with the coil pack and uh, Philip and, and Rent for Ring had one in stock and, you know, they jumped right on it and got us one and we were able to swap it out. And, you know, it's just stuff like that that everyone works together and I think it's I think Renting the most amazing yeah. food shot supplier of the Evercring. And let's see, they have definitely the best. Are we going to get food shot for the car? Probably. We'll get a car food shot, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, few shot, food shot, it's almost the same. Same <laughs> amount of letter starts with an F. Yeah, cool. well, thank you very much. It's getting dark, so see you guys in tomorrow's vlog, uh, but most importantly, next year on the track because we might go to Spa. We're actually going to Zolder still this yeah, year. Yeah, we're going to Spa. We're going to Zolder in January or December, January, and February, I believe, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what's funny is someone asked me once, oh, why don't you go to these other tracks? I say, I love it here. Yeah. You know, I love I love the Nurburgring. If I could go to Spa, but well, we'll see. But we'll we'll go we'll we'll go have some fun at some other tracks and enjoy it. But yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of good stuff coming up. Definitely, we're gonna get to Spa, Zolder, and uh, no, it should be fun. Yeah, absolutely. So stay tuned. And again, many many thanks to every single one of you who's been watching daily or weekly or even only monthly tuning in. You've been amazing. We do it because of you, for you, and we're looking forward to see you next year at the most amazing racetrack in the world, the Nürburgring. Thank you. Bye-bye. No, I'm actually going to tell you more about, tell you more about and ask you more about the car for me for next year.